Hey guys, got a question here for you on this right here. Before I get going into this right here, let's talk here a little bit. Um, if I had a circle, if I had a circle right here, let me draw a nice little circle. If I had a circle, here's my circle. Pretty good circle, isn't it? Okay. If I wanted to say right here, guys, let's go ahead and talk about this circle and cut it, say, in, let's cut this circle in half right here. Okay, there's my half circle, right? Okay, look at half of the circle over here, just on the right side. Okay, how much of that circle have I shaded? One half. One half, right? Now let me ask you this question right here. What is, what is half of that half going to get me in terms of a fraction? In other words, I take this right half right here, and I decide to cut the right half into two equal parts. How much? So you're telling me, if I understand you correctly, you're telling me that if I cut this right half in half like this, top and the bottom are the same now, aren't they? If I was looking at just this part right in here then, just this part right in here, what fraction of the whole Third. circle do I have there? One fourth. One fourth, don't I? Wouldn't four of these make up this whole thing right here, this yeah. whole circle? Okay, so now I want to write down what we kind of talked about. I said, first of all, start with how much? We start with the whole circle, we cut it in what? Yeah. Cut it in half. We said, of that half, take half of the half, right? So we said half of half would be what fraction? You just told me one fourth. Okay? A couple things, guys, real quickly. Anytime we talk about something, um, in math, sometimes words can have some kind of a meaning towards an operation. And in this case right here, anytime I say what's a fraction of something like this right here, this word of right here always, or for the most part I should say, means multiplication. So if I say what's half of half, that really means one half times what? One half here, right? This is this meaning right here. This is saying one half times one half. Well, guys, take a look at the one half and the one half. What could you do with these here to form a fraction of one fourth? Now, there's a couple things here. Get rid of the addition subtraction out of your mind. Start thinking of multiplication. What would you do with the one and the one right here to form another one up top? Times it. How about the two and the two? It times it again. Okay. Does one times one make a one up top? Does two times two on the bottom make a four on the bottom here? So anytime it looks like to me we talk about multiplying fractions, it looks like you take the numerators and do what with them? Multiply them. Take the denominators and do what with them? Multiply. So let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. You don't need to write this down. Here's my circle. All right. Okay, see my circle? Cut this in half, all right? So we're kind of looking at half of a circle. Okay? What I'm going to do with this circle is I'm going to cut it into equal parts. <coughs> okay, well, see that these shapes are all the same right here. Looks like I took this right half and divided it up into how many equal parts, guys? Three, three. three equal parts there, right? Okay? Here's a question for you then. How many of these right here, if they were the same size, how many of these? would it take to fill this whole thing up? One, One out of six, all right? There's six of these that would fill this up, okay? So what I really did is I said, take your half, and I really want to know how many parts there are in a half. I want to know one-third of a half. Well, you read this is one of six different pieces that could be shaded here. There were three parts over here and three parts over here. So a third of a half, what's the one times one up top going to be, guys? What's the two times three in the bottom? Anytime you're multiplying fractions, numerators with numerators, denominators with denominators. Make sense? Okay, so let's jump into what we're dealing with here notes-wise. On the front page of your notes, goal-wise, we're looking at uh, multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. Okay? The uh, paragraph that's really important is right below it. How about a volunteer to read right below my goal? Go ahead, Brandon. Product of two or more fractions is equal to the product of the numerators over the product of the denominators. Okay, the product of the numerators over the product of the denominators. Okay. Now again, don't lose uh, sight 
uh, of this idea that when I get an answer, you always want to come back and put it in what form? Simplest form. And we'll, we'll, we'll pull that up here in a second, okay? Got a question, Brandon? No. For the next one? Yeah. Let me give an example first, and then we'll talk about this here in a second. So hold that thought for me for a second, okay, Brandon? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so as an example right here, if I had a fraction, let's just say maybe I had, I don't know, three, uh, let's write it like this, three-fifths times maybe, I don't know, let's go just two-thirds, okay? All right, now I'm not going to get into this idea of simplifying before we multiply, but guys up top, what's the two times three going to get you? Six. Six. Okay, now when I get to this point, six over 15, we want to ask ourselves, can this be simplified? Think of a value that would go into 6 and into 15? Yes, 3. 3. How many times up top? 2 and then bottom five. So we think 2 fifths here, right? Think 2 fifths. So what I'm going to encourage you guys to do is this. Carry out your multiplication. Um, well, I don't know if I've got that calculator bookmarked. Do you guys have that calculator bookmarked in your, in the one that was... Uh, Which one would that be? Well, it'll be the one that we put in fractions in simplest form with. Tell me, tell me what that web, hang on one second. There wasn't called a calculator soup or something it like was. that. It was it's calculator soup and it's simplifying fractions. Okay, let me, uh, Was it this one here? No. Yeah. Was it this one? The purple one? Yep. Whoops. Okay, so just to reacquaint ourselves with this right here, when I went ahead and uh, multiplied stuff out of here, we got 6 over 15, right? Now, we did a really good job of simplifying that down to this, but just want to make sure that we understand that uh, we have this tool right here when we get to the end. Uh, what value would you put up top there? 6. Okay, so let me throw a 6 in up top. What are you going to throw in the bottom? 15. 15. All right. And then we calculate this right here. And does that put me down to two fifths right here? Yeah. Okay. So use that resource that you've got. You've got to use it, right? Okay. So is there any reason not to simplify answers in this stuff? No. Absolutely not. Okay. You've got the tool to do that. Okay. All right. So uh, basically, guys, your rule. In multiplication of fraction, multiply the tops together, multiply the bottoms together. When you multiply the tops together, they get you your new numerator. When you multiply the bottoms together, they get you your new denominator, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just a matter of simplifying to that point, okay? All right, uh, Brandon, you said you were on track with us right here. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and read through this first. Okay, well, actually, yeah, go ahead and read it, yeah. Even bread recipe calls for one-fourth cup of Okay, so she's got a recipe that calls for a quarter cup of oil. She only wants to make half of it. Okay, how much does she need? What, what did you think your answer was going to be? One eighth. One eighth, okay. So let's just kind of jot down what we've got here. We talked about this early in the lesson, but you guys really say, all right, here's this recipe card. It says, I need a quarter of whatever. All right, she only wants to make half, half of the recipe. She only wants half of what the recipe is calling for. What did the recipe call for in terms of olive oil? What fraction of a cup? One fourth. One fourth. Do you guys really agree that she wants half of a fourth? Yeah. Okay, what did we say that this term of means when we're dealing with fractions right here? What operation? What is it? Multiply. Multiply. So this is really one half times one fourth, isn't it? All right, so by rule, what's one times one in your numerator? What's your denominator product? Okay, one eighth already in simplest form, or can we go further? It's simple. Okay, so let's put this in terms of how much oil does Ethan need? 
one eighth of a cup. Okay, very good. What if she wanted a third of the recipe? What would she need? Instead of half the recipe, what if she wanted a third of the recipe? One twelfth. One twelfth. Okay, I think we've got this. This is easier than the other stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Gosh darn it. Very odd year. That's uh, it's been an odd year so far. Okay, never mind. All right, let's have uh, let's have you guys try a couple of these on your own. Let's see what you come up with. Let's go uh, seven over sixteen times five over fourteen. Uh, let's go two over fifteen. Times, how about negative 5 over 18? Now, again, put them in what form? Simplest. Simplify it in the end, okay? And you've got the tool check. And let's go maybe, uh, I don't know, how about 3 sevenths times 3 fortieths? All right, see what you guys come up with for those, okay? Go ahead and multiply them out. If you need to simplify, pop your Chromebook open. When you've got your three answers, check with someone around you. See if you agree. If you disagree, talk about why you disagree. Give you about a minute or so on those, okay? Anybody need to borrow a calculator at all? Go ahead and get started on the first one right here, guys. I'm going to show you a couple things here. Um, you know, sometimes teachers will show you a different way of doing this right here, and I, I could go ahead and entertain that idea, but I think I'm going to go ahead and keep doing what we've been doing just to uh, kind of make sure that we're all on kind of the same pattern right here. But, guys, when I do this one up top here, 7 times 5, what do you get up there? What did you guys get for your new numerator? 35. 35. Okay. On the bottom, what'd you get there? 224. Okay. Now, uh, did you guys put 35 over 224 in to simplify then? Yeah. What'd you end up with? 5 over 32. Now, before I even put in 
before I even put this into the calculator and simplify right here, guys, a couple things. I, I can know that I'm right a couple different ways. Sometimes, and I'm just going to show this real quickly, sometimes people will simplify before they carry out their product right here. You guys see the 7 and the 14 right here? Yeah. One's up top and one's on the bottom, right? What do you guys think? Go with this or not? Yeah. Okay. Here, if you look at a number up top, 7 and 14, as long as you're looking at one number in the top and one number in the bottom, you could always simplify before you carry stuff out. In other words, look at the 7 and the 14. Can you think of a number that would go evenly in the 7 and in the 14? What is it, Mason? 7. How many times does 7 go into 7 up here? Once. How many times does 7 go into 14? Okay. So if I would reduce that before I carried out the multiplication, check it out. What you have up top now really is 1 times what? Which is what value here? Down here, you've got 16 times a 2, which is what value? So I can do my simplifying before I do the problem. However, I think it might be better for us to maybe multiply out and then simplify in the end. You guys agree? Yeah. Okay. Um, how can I know if I'm right? Well, what I could do is this. Uh, if I pull up my calculator here, without even simplifying to begin with, what do we have as a fraction, guys? 35 divided by 224, right? Somebody bank this decimal for me. Who's got that in their memory bank? 0.15625, can you kind of remember that? 0.15625. How do I know I've got 5 30 seconds as my simplest answer right now? Well, if I take 5 and divide it by 32, what decimal had I better get? Same. Let's check it and see. 5 divided by, is it the same? It is. Okay, so I think it's a great idea to say, okay, we got this part right here, 35 over 224. Come into here, say, all right, let's reset this. And let's get some new values in there. So up top here, I want 35. And the bottom, what will we, was it 224? And then go ahead and calculate that. What's it giving you? 5.30 seconds. Okay. Uh, in my next one, what, 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 what was maybe different in the next one that could have thrown you for a loop? That it was negative. It's negative. Rules are still the same. What's 2 times negative 5 up top? Negative 10. Say that again. Could. Uh, and we'll talk about that here quickly. Uh, what was 15 times 18? Boy. 270. Okay. Guys, I think I can do this one in my head. Looks like both of them will be divisible by 10 because they both end in 0, right? Yeah. Which would be negative 1 up top and negative 127 is what we would get for this one. Now, Brandon, you were saying, well, you could do it the way you just showed us as well, which might be say, you know, let's simplify before I multiply. Simplify before I multiply, maybe. Okay. How about the 2 and the 18? Those are both even, right? Yep. Wouldn't 2 go into both of those? How many times did two go in here? Okay, how about the negative five and the 15? Is there a value that would go into negative five and 15? Five would go into both, right? Negative one and how many times would it go in here? Check it out, what's one times negative one up top? The red and the blue. And that negative one up top there? How about the nine times the three in the bottom? How many prefer the first method? Get the answer and then come in and simplify. I agree. How many like to simplify first and then multiply? Okay. A couple different options here. All right. But use them. Whatever you're most comfortable with, I strongly encourage you to do what you're most comfortable with. Brandon, I got a question for you here then. Since you're uh, all on to this right here, is there any simplifying I can do anywhere? Nope. So my, if there's no simplifying, my final answer is already going to be simplified, isn't it? What do you guys get for this? 9 over 280. Okay. And if they put that into their calculator, right, it's just, if they get the same answer, that means it's already in simplest it's already form. already simplest form, yep. And, and, and maybe I should show you that real quickly. We got 9 over 280. So if you come back over here, that's a great question, Mrs. Miller. Well, I didn't want them to be confused if nope. it nope. gives uh, them the same answer. Let me reset this here. So she's saying, okay, what Mrs. Miller is saying is, you know what? What if I would put 9 over 280 into this? Uh, what was the 
is it now? Like 280, is that right? Yeah. And it says to calculate, and what we get is 9 over 280. means the greatest common factor is 1. Anybody remember the phrase for the greatest common factor is 1? It's a two-word phrase. Two numbers are blank, blank if their greatest common factor is 1. Relatively right. Yep, very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, first page notes. First page notes. Give me some kind of a summary of what we're really doing here. Just tell me, give me a... Snapshot of what it looks like we're doing right here. Multiplying fractions. multiplying fractions. And what's the rule for multiplying fractions? Somebody besides Mason? What's the rule for multiplying fractions? Multiply the numerators and denominators. And in the end, make sure you always do what, Chelsea? Excellent. Okay, so good summary, gang. Okay, uh, second page. Well, this wouldn't be any fun. This wouldn't be any fun if we couldn't start talking about mixed numbers down the road, but we'll look at example two that talks about whole numbers. I might ask you to put a star by this. This is kind of an important problem. Whole numbers, 34, 14, 48, 62. How do you write 62 as a rational number? Rational meaning, how do you write 62 as a fraction? One over 62. Other way around, Johnny. 62 over 1. Anytime you have a whole number, we show that number is rational or a fraction by putting it over what value? 1. Okay, so in the example right here where it says multiplying whole numbers with fractions right here, it says, at Jefferson Middle School, two-fifths of the students ride the bus to and from school. It says 750 students attend Jefferson Middle School. How many ride the bus? What fraction of kids ride the bus according to that problem? Two-fifths of how many students? Do you guys agree that they want to know what two-fifths, here's that big word again, of 750 is? You agree that that's what they want to know there? What did I tell you this phrase right here meant when we're involving fractions? We're taking two-fifths then times 750, but we said multiply numerators and denominators together. Oh. Guys, I don't have a fraction here. What can I do with 750 to put it into fraction form? Put it over 1. This is really 2 fifths times 750 over what value? Anytime you're involving multiplication of fractions with a whole number, always, always, always take that whole number and put it over a 1. Okay, and then your rules take over from here. Uh, up top, gang. Well, let's see. 2 times 750. Help me out. Two times seven. How much? 1,500. 1, Very good. How about on the bottom? Five. Now guys, this is kind of a relevant problem right here. How many students are going to ride that bus? 1,500 over five. Did anybody punch that again, by the way, in that simplifying part? What's it kick out to you? Let's say 300 over one. Okay. Think about it. 300 over one is really what value? 300. 300. Isn't that really 1,500 divided by 5 right there? Mm -hmm. How many times will 5 go into 1,500? 300. 300, right? So what, how, what, how many kids are riding the bus home of the 750? 300. 300. Okay. Hey, I want you to do this. 300 kids ride the bus. How many total kids were there? How many total kids were there in this problem? And we thought, how many ride the bus? Go to your calculator right here. Go to your calculator. The top number I want you to put in. Put in 300. Got 300 in the numerator? Put 750 in the denominator. 300 of the 750 are riding the bus. Does that simplify to a certain fraction? What fraction does it simplify to? Two fifths? Oh my gosh. What fraction of the people that say it rides the bus? Two fifths. So how many kids are riding the bus? 300 there. Does this make sense when we start tying it together? All right. What questions have you got so far? Okay, well, I guess the last thing that I've hit here today then is this. We can't have any fun multiplying fractions if we don't take this idea of 
multiplying mixed numbers, okay? As an example right here, mixed number. Somebody give me an example of a mixed number. Any mixed number. One and four eighths, okay? I agree that's a mixed number, a whole number and a fraction. Let's take that times another mixed number. Somebody give me a different mixed number. Two and four fifths, okay? Guys, when we were adding and subtracting fractions right here, we always, um, I should back up and say, when we were adding and subtracting mixed numbers after we did fractions, what did we always do with the mixed numbers first? Change them into improper fractions. Good, Mason. Okay, so same thing is going to apply here. I want to multiply mixed numbers. So I want to put this into a situation where uh, we can multiply fractions. So we've got to make them improper. So 1 and 4 eighths. What's that going to look like as an improper, gang? 12 over 8. I agree. Okay, just kind of a refresher. Chelsea, can you tell me how you got that again? Times the 8 and the 1 and then you add. 8 and 1 is 8 plus 4. That gets me the numerator of 12. Denominator is 8. All right, how about in about the second one, I should say? 14 over 5. 14 over 5, okay. All right, so help me calculate this right here. Um, 12 times 14, 168. How about 8 times 5? 40, okay. So we've got the process down. Process is feeling pretty good. We can work our way through and, and, and solve this, but uh, let's just go ahead and hit it in here. So what was the top value again? 168, is that right? And what was the bottom? 40. And I think the one that I like is uh, 4 and a fifth. Did you guys buy that? 4 and 1 fifth. Okay. So the idea is really the same. If you see any mixed numbers, you still have to turn them into a fraction. Whether it's proper or improper, doesn't matter. Apply your rules and then come back and simplify them again. Okay. So let's have you try a couple of these. A couple of these we'll try and then uh, we'll put you on your way today. Pretty easy stuff today, isn't it? See? In the new year, school's new year, you guys are doing an awesome job. You're batting a thousand in 2015, right? Sure. Just sure. Okay. Now we'll touch up on some stuff here a little bit tomorrow. Um, Remember, if there's a negative sign with a mixed number, put the negative in at the end. Take 5 times 3, which is what here? In this example, 5 times 3 would be? Add the 1, which is 16. And then put your sign on at the very end. So this would be really a negative 16 over what here? Negative 16 over 5. So be careful on that, okay? Times 4 and 1, 6. Um... Let's go five and two ninths times six. Let's go negative two and three fourths mm -hmm. times five and a third. I want you guys to see what you can do with those right there, okay? Just three of them there. Okay, so on your own right there, go ahead and give those a shot.
big plans for tomorrow then, Parker? Hopefully sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> Let the Gorgons get us. Let Winter Storm Gorgon get us. Are you? Yep. I'm quite sure. I'm quite I was thinking for a two hour delay, you know, don't go to bed until like 2.30. Last night? Yeah, and then I wake up and my mom goes, it's time to go to school. I'm like, you're joking. She goes, you didn't get a two hour delay. You better get up. Yeah, it just wasn't windy enough. What other schools had two hour delays? Well, I think the deal is today, though, I don't think a lot of schools are really have students. With us being on a trimester schedule, I think that they're on a semester schedule, so I think a lot of schools ended their semester right before Christmas break, so I think today is kind of like a teacher in-service day for a lot, of, a lot of different schools. All right, how about the first one? Anybody got an answer on that first one? Negative 13 and one-third. Negative 13 and one-third? Okay, we'll check these here in a second. That's an ugly looking three. Yeah, you guys get it. How about the next one? 31 and one third. 31 and one third. A lot of threes up here. How about the next one? Negative 14 and two thirds. Negative 14 and two thirds. Okay, let's check this out. All right. Uh, the three and a fifth and the four and a sixth. Uh, just make sure I've got this right. You guys tell me if I do my work correctly up here. You gotta change all these improper fractions or whole numbers into some kind of a fraction first. So the first one I believe we said negative 16 over five, didn't we? Yeah. Times four and one sixth, which is at 25 over six. Is that right? All agree? Okay, so I'm going to go into this calculator right here. So help me out. Um, what was the uh, 25? What was the top part when I did that? 16 times 25. Is that 400? Is that right? Yeah. So it'd be negative 400 over 30, wouldn't it? Yeah. So let me type this in. Whoops. Negative 400. Bottom is 30, and negative 13 and a third. Are we correct there? Okay, do I need to go over all these? you want to see them all, or give me a yay or a nay? Thumbs up, thumbs down? We good with them? Okay. How many had all three of those? Just curious. Yeah, I want to go through and at least write the work down that we would have here so we knew what to punch in. but. I guess that the second one kind of intrigues me. With five and two ninths and then the six. How about the five and two ninths? What did that look like as an improper? 47. 47 over <coughs> nine times. <coughs> you got to put the six over a one. Okay, and then do your products. Punch them in. <coughs> Should end up with 31 and a third. We had 31 and a third there. Okay. And then find my last one right here, two and three, four. So two times four is eight. Eight plus three would be what value, gang? Eight plus three would be? So this should be a negative 11 fourths times, let's see, five, three, and one, 16, right? So it looks like to me, oh, yeah, negative 14 and two-thirds looks good there. How are you guys feeling about this? Pretty good? Yeah. All right. Uh, I need to take a look at your quick quiz here. Um, I, I'd like to kind of like to talk about number three on the quick quiz together. Uh, you're going to see a few problems like this. And in, uh, in number four, it's the same thing. In number four, you guys see your quick quiz there, first of all? Mm -hmm. As number four, how many fractions are you multiplying together? Okay. All three tops together, all three bottoms together, and then? Simplify, but uh, I'd kind of like to go over number three together. So if somebody would volunteer to read number three for me here. <coughs> what does three say? Three. Anybody? 25C to, to, to the third yes. over? 12 times negative 4C to the 
to the second part of the picture. And that's a correct. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Guys, uh, in this right here, you'll see a little bit. They're going to start throwing variables together. Now, guys, we talked about this a while back. When you have uh, common bases, you're multiplying them together. What do the exponents actually do when you're multiplying common bases? Half. So if I had c to the fourth times c to the sixth, that would be c to the ten. Okay. So right here, what I'm going to do is this, guys. Watch what I do. I'm going to go 25 times negative 4 first. 25 times negative 4 would be negative 100, right? Yep. How about c to the third and c to the second? There's only three c's here and two Five. c's here. So how many total c's are there? So the top of the row would be negative 100 c to the fifth. you all agree with that? Yep. Then on the bottom, you're going to have a 12 times 15, which is what? 12 times 15, somebody punch that in. 180. 180, very good. Okay. Now, this is the idea that we've talked about before. Simplifying fractions that would contain any kind of variable. Remember when I put a split in here like that? Remember when we did that? We said simplify the numbers that you can. The variables pretty much stay the same, don't they? So the C to the fifth is going to stay right up top here. So in your calculator, you would take negative 100 and put it over 180. Now I know that 10 goes into both of them, so won't the zeros drop out here? Yeah. Okay, and then won't two go into both of these? Yeah. How many times will two go into negative 10? Five. Negative five, and then how many times will two go into 18? Well, nine, right? Now guys, what was still up top with the negative 10 though? That would be C6. C to the fifth. fifth. Okay, so what I'm getting at is this. Don't let those letters fool you. You just need to know that if they're like bases and you're multiplying, add your exponents. Okay? Once you get into a situation like this, take the negative 100 over the 180 and use that as the part to simplify, and then just keep that c to the fifth in its proper place. In this case, c to the fifth was in the numerator. So simplest form would look like that. Negative 5 c to the fifth all over what there? All over what? Isn't it all over 9? Yeah? You guys got that down? You guys got that? Okay. All right, assignment wise, let's look assignment wise. First one of the year. About time I gave you some work. Assignment wise, let's do the following. Let's go page uh, 200 and page 239 is where it starts. Okay. Uh, let's go Let's go 9 through 35 odds, all right? Okay, and now hear me out on this. This is going to be due for Wednesday. Now, if tomorrow is as bad as they say it's going to be, if we lose tomorrow, then Wednesday becomes Thursday. If we lose Tuesday and Wednesday, if we lose two days, then Wednesday will become a Friday. All right, everybody clear on that? Here's what I'd like to do in the last 10 minutes. Um, you can be working on your quick quiz, get that turned in. I at least want to pull you up here and show you your grade uh, in terms of where you're at at this point. we got to be getting pretty close to midterm, aren't we? Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. So, um, yeah, when you get done with the quick quiz, bring that up. Uh,